what a fool I was to do all this nonsense. I did that. But even on the blast, I could see only the million sun shining brightly. That is, he quoted from Bhagavad Gita. He said, there is not one day in my life that I don't read Bhagavad Gita. Such a great scientist, Robert Oppenheimer. Similarly, there are plenty of other scientists towards the end of their scientific journey. They were able to see that this is not, this is not ultimate. Somewhere we are missing something and they were able to get the connection of what they are missing. It is only the truth of Brahma. Brahman, the Brahman, the Parabrahman. We are thinking so many things. So they all come back to the subject of consciousness. Even today, the general, the general purpose science thinks that consciousness is evolved from somewhere. That is what their thought is and they are trying to experiment. They are never going to succeed because all these great scientists have clearly uh, demonstrated that consciousness is what we are. We are nothing but consciousness. We are nothing but the being consciousness. We are very clear about it. Such is the power of Vedanta and such is the power with which Vedanta is given to us in such a simple language by Bhagavan. In the Supadesa Saraha, Supadesa Uddi and Ulla Dhanapad, which we are going to see. Bhagavan is made it all so simple, even when so many when, when people, when, when, there are, when there was a totally ignorant man who came to Bhagavan and he said, Bhagavan, I don't know anything. Well, I, all these people around you, they are all talking something, they are all asking some great questions. I don't know anything, Bhagavan. How will I, how will I, how will I get to the show? Excellent. You don't know anything? Very nice, very nice, very nice. Happy. You don't know anything. You say you don't know anything. Right? You say you don't know anything. Who is that you? That is all you need to know. So you know everything. Bhagavan immediately gives this a such a mega booster. He says, you know everything. Whatever they are talking is something that makes no sense. You ask me, I don't know, Bhagavan, I don't know who, I don't know anything. So if I don't know anything, there is that I. All you have to do is you already have everything with you. Just look at that I. This is all you need to do. Look at the greatness of Bhagavan. We have seen so many lectures, we have, we have heard so many lectures, we have heard so many, we have read so many books, we have read volumes and volumes and volumes of books. But look at grace, look at the personification of grace only. The grace that says, you know that you don't know anything. Which means there is an I that knows that I don't know anything. All you have to do is know the I. You already know everything. Who else can say this? This is... This is what is Bhagavan's Brahmastra. A lot of people who do not understand, there are a lot of people, I know, I know personally, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, big time gurus who call, who are very popular today, even today, they are, uh, who am I, uh, who am I crowd? They, 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 they say Bhagavan's devotees is, who am I crowd? They make, you know, they make, uh, uh, they, they make joke. All that is fine. We are not even bothered about all that. We know what, they all have never understood the concept of who am I. Who am I is extremely powerful. They, they have not understood that. They think you have to keep on uh, doing, uh, no, I am not this, I am not this. And then they say, we'll have to, we'll have to sort of claim the Brahman. After eliminating everything, we'll have to claim. Who is to claim? Which means again they are totally in duality. Is it not? If you fail to claim something, there has to be some claimant and there has to be something to be claimed. But that's totally against the concept of Vedanta, what Bhagavad Pada Shankaracharya taught. Bhagavad Pada said there is only one. So who is to claim who? Bhagavan clearly says there is no two. It is only like Vivarta means there is only like a snake appearing in Rome. He brings, he boils down everything, thread back, everything is, every knot is smooth. So what Bhagavan said? Look at that eye, which is not there, and that eye will disappear, and the original, whatever is the truth, will shine forth on its own. 
You don't need to do anything. Such is the power. And in this loka, Bhagavan says, there is nothing. All this knowledge, what we are talking about is not knowledge. Because when the, non, the true knowledge is one that is devoid of knowing and not knowing. That is only the true knowledge. That is the truth. That is unmai. That is unmai arivu. True knowledge. Because there is nothing to understand. Because everything is ekam. We are boiling down to the crux. There is only one. Everything is ekam. In ekam, who is, when there is only one. In that ekamava, who is to know what? See, nobody needs to know anything at all. So Bhagavan here clearly brings us again to the truth. That the knowledge that we think today, I know this, I know this, I know this mathematical problem, I know this scientific problem, or I know economics, everything is ignorance. Everything is thorough ignorance. And when we say, I don't know, that is also ignorance, obviously. We don't need to bother about that, because that we already consider as ignorance. So this knowing, and this not knowing, everything falls under the realm of ignorance only. Because there is nothing for anybody. When you talk about knowing, there is a knower and there is an object of knowledge. Here in the state of Advaita, there is nothing ekam, everything is one. So there is nobody to know anything. So this is what Bhagavan teaches in the sloka number 27. So there is nothing called no knowledge, there is nothing called ignorance. Beyond that, what is there? That is the true knowledge. And then in 28 he says, Anadi Ananda Sakundi Para Akanda Sita Mundi Para. Now Bhagavan brings we were so far talking about Sat and Chit. The third aspect called Ananda. We have not talked about it. In this look, I have one thing to start into the picture. Tana Yirutkal, which means one's own nature. Tanadiyal, Tanadiyal, which means Tanadi, which means one's own. Diyal means nature. Yadi, what it is, if you know, if you, if you start understanding, if one knows what one's own nature is, then what will remain and shine is only the beingness, or which is the beginningless, endless, and unbroken existence, consciousness, bliss. Satchit Ananda. Anati Akanda Satchit Ananda. This verse, if one knows what one's own nature is, then it will be found the beginningless, the endless, the unbroken existence, consciousness, bliss. Is the only thing that is there. So, here, what Bhagavan says is, we have to know our true nature. The moment we know our true nature, then we will know it has always been an unbroken, un, a, a, a costless, there is no beginning, there is no end. Anadi. Anadi means there is no beginning. Ananta. Ananta. There is no anta. There is no end. Sat. The being. Sitchit Anandam. Sitchit Anandam is all the only thing that is there. So Bhagavan says in this yoga, so we have to know who we are. The moment we know, if one knows what one's own nature is, then what will remain and shines us is only the beginningless, endless, and unbroken, unbroken existence consciousness. There is no gap here. In this existence, consciousness, bliss. Anadi, ananda, sat, akanda, sita, ananda. Akanda means, akanda. Akanda means, infinite. There is nothing else other than this. That is our true nature. Once we know that, we will immediately come to know that we are only this un beginningless, endless, unbroken, sat, Chit Ananda. This is what is the meaning of this sloka, number 28. This is Bhagavan's teaching. Then, once we know who we are, 
all ignorance all unknown unknown everything will be dissipated everything will go up we will know that we are this satchitananda and in shloka 29 he says means bondage veedu means generation so parasugam supreme bliss atra which means devoid of so the meaning of this sloka is abiding in that state of self having attained the supreme bliss mentioned in the previous verse which is devoid of bondage and liberation that's something called bondage and liberation is abiding in the service of god this is what if somebody says i have to do ishwara seva the only ishwara seva that anybody can do to the ishwara or the conceived ishwara is being yourself remaining as yourself because the thought of bondage liberation everything comes only when the i rises only for the ego for param brahman for sanchitananda think called bondage there is nothing called liberation it's always in the state of equanimity it is always in the state of one so there is no bondage so for whom is the bondage you always think that i am i am I'm bound i need to get liberation you always say that is the mumukshu who is eagerly wanting to get rid of the samsara all this we talk all this is only for ego only after ego comes in because simple example in deep sleep did we have a thought of bondage or liberation or for that matter did we had even one single thought no something so in the state of the ulti- what what is the real meaning of irai pani nitral be in the service of the god only to realize yourself why why is this so is a beautiful small explanation that i read for you bondage and liberation are both mere thoughts and hence they can exist only in the state of ignorance that is anjnana and not in the state of true knowledge which is jnana the state of the state of self awareness so since god is perfect whole he does not want need any service from us right we all know this that we need god service for us for our improvement for our betterment god does not need anything from us that is why he is god right but when we rise as a separate individual feeling i am this body we experience endless misery only because we come we consider ourselves as body as all the all our mercy all our miseries all our problems is only related to the body not necessarily health wise mentally also whatever everything is related to the body we experience endless misery and hence it becomes necessary for the all merciful god to run to our rescue in order to save us from our own self created problem how did this problem come forth there was no problem he rose as the ahankara ego as an individual i considering a body and all thoughts are now he run to god god and i am stuck be save me everybody every one of us do it when we are when we are in deep trouble who who we who can we go to other than god we go to god so what happens thus by rising as i am so and so we make it necessary for the god to serve us that for the only true service we can render to god is to cease raising as the individual i and thereby to refrain from making it necessary for him to serve us we are making god a servant here why because 
of our ignorance, we raise as an I, we raise as an individual. And because of that, we are putting, giving a burden on top of the God to come and save, and save us. So, what, are, what, is the, what is the ultimate uh, meaning? Hence, to abide eternally as a self. Instead of rising again as an individual, truly abiding in the service of God. So, when somebody says, I have to serve God, I want to serve God, it is not like going to the temple, cleaning the temple or doing puja or doing aradhana or doing all that. God does not need all that. It is only for our own satisfaction we are doing all this. And see, no, I want to be at the service of the God. I want to be, I want to serve only the, my master, only my God. By doing all this, we are putting the burden on the God that we think we are serving. And we are making that God to come and rescue us and we are burdening Him. So, if we truly want to be of service to God, Bhagavan says, know yourself, realize who you are, so that you don't need anything from the God, that God can be peaceful. That imagined God. Again, at that time only we will we'll know that the God. Because right now we are in Anya Bhava, we are not yet in Ananya Bhava. So, understand, we want everything. We have a problem, we go immediately rush to the temple. Bhagavan, hey, please take care of me. Arunachala, take care of me. Vankatachala, take care of me. Whatever it is. I don't have any money, I am in poverty, I am stricken in poverty. Please take care of me. Please take care of my family. Please take care of my grandchild. There's no end. We are only trying to burden the God by doing all this simply for only one reason that we have not understood who we are. So, it is very clear if you want to be of any service to God, stop all this puja, stop all this going by big garland and putting it on the God, all that. No. No who you are. Look at the way Bhagavan is coming to the climax. 29th sloka, Bhagavan is saying this. So, if you want to truly be of service to God, know yourself. Bhagavan has never at any point in time, any one of his work, any one of his stuff, gone away from this concept. This is the one. The truth of Bhagavan that we all need to know. Know yourself. Know yourself. Nothing else is needed. So look at this, the way he's constructed the sloka. Abiding in the state of self, having attained the supreme bliss, as mentioned in the previous sloka, that is Bandaviratra, uh, uh, that, that, that is Tanadiyal, uh, uh, knowing yourself. So, that is all you need to do. That is abiding in the service of God. That is relieving God from all our mind created, ignorance created pressure. So, we, we, when we know something, when we know, when we love our, when we, let us say, there is an elder whom we love so much. When we want to be of service to the elder, we will ensure that we serve the elder and not be served by the elder. Is that not? We want to only be of service to the elder. How? By doing whatever will be helpful to the elder. And not taking, and not that elder will come and do all the service. Say what? This is how we do in normal life. Similarly, see, this is the case with God. Bhagavan says, if you want to be of service to God, relieve God from all the responsibility it can be peaceful. Why are you burdening the God again? Even with so much. Even though we know that God will take how much of us, He is capable. But still, from your point of view, from our point of view, what we need to know yourself. The moment you don't know yourself, what happens? Everything is, this is the true service that one can do to God. That's the crux of this uh, uh, 29th sloka and the 30th sloka. Yanatri yelvad terin yad ad tanatravam yendran undi para tanam ramanesan undi para. This sloka was composed by Murugana. This last sloka is Muruganath's uh, position where he says, Yana Triyal Vadu Terim. That is, what is, ex- what is experienced? If one knows that, the 
it remains as I. As he still exists, that is, when the I, Yan at Yan means I, at means without. So, if you, whatever that survives and lives without this concept of I, that alone is excellent tapas. That is the meaning of tapas. The meaning of tapas is not to sit with your eyes closed and doing all these austerities, doing yogi pose and all that. That is not tapas. Tapas means to give up the feeling of I. What? What is experienced if one, if one knows that which remains after I has ceased to exist, the I, the, the I, the ego. After the ceasing of existence of this ego, whatever exists, once you know that, that is excellent tapas. Thus said Lord Ramana, who is our self. Our self is nothing but Lord Ramana. But Lord Ramana is our self. So Murida concludes Lopadeya Saraha by writing this sloka, saying that whatever remains after this ego called I is extinguished, whatever remains that. That is knowing that is the most excellent tapas. Who, how? That is what Bhagavan Ramana told us. He concludes. Upadeya Saraha with this thing. So, means I. I am only The original Asanchitananda is nothing. Our own Bhagavan Ramana. It's all beautiful. So, the state which is experienced when one knows and abides as the real self. Which is that which remains after the individual I or ego has ceased to exist. That state of non-rising is alone real tapas. The so-called austerities or tapas which we perform uh, by, uh, which is performed by a lot of ascetics uh, in the Daruka forest especially we saw. That is how we started with the rishis of Daruka forest. They all sat and they were doing so many things, all thinking this is tapas, this is tapas, doing so much karma, doing so much yaga, yatna, and all that. That is what they were thinking as tapas. But is that tapas? No. Because they were performed only with the aim of gaining power, fulfilling desire, and thereby enhancing their ego. True tapas, as taught by Lord Shiva to the ascetics, as defined by Sri Bhagavan, in this world is nothing but the state of egolessness, the state of perfect self-denial. Self-denial here means I denial, the ego denial, in which one knows and abides as the real self instead of rising as an individual to do or achieve anything. That is real tapas as declared by Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi. With that, we conclude the main portion of Upadesa Sara. We can, we can again in the next session, and uh, the next time we meet, we will summarize the whole of Upadesa Sara in one hour. The entire, the, all the 30, we will quickly sum up the whole thing so that we invite that in our mind. So, so what is the crux of Upadesa Saraha is to know who you really are, who you actually are. That is all. And that is the aim, that is the real purpose as declared by Bhagavan Sri Ramana. I'm finding it difficult to talk anything. Other than our Bhagavan. Look at our Bhagavan. How simply he's taken us to that. All we have to do is be faithful to his teachings. Practice his teachings. There's nothing else we can do. Like Bhagavan said, this is what is Irai Pani. This is what is this? This is how we can serve a God. So if you want, if one of us wants to 
सर्व भगवान रमण महर्षि तो ओनली थिंग वी नीड टू डू इज टू एंक्वायर एंड फाइंड आउट हू वी आर अंडी इन दैट स्टेट लेट्स मेडिटेट फॉर अ कपड़ा All of us. No more of that. I'm sorry, for my dear friends. But one, he let it took me to another state of of an emotion which I could not uh, sort of control. Just was outpouring, and uh, that's how it is. This is how Bhagwan is always to all of us without exception. So let's discuss. Upadesa Saraha. Anybody wants to ask anything? We can discuss, please. Adna chala vasudi. Adna. This is what means taking the name of Ramana itself. Okay. Today the emotion what I saw in you. Okay, we should come to that state at least. Okay, uh, I cannot express okay, definitely because you have been associated. I cannot say we to meet Karna Chela. Very much blessed. We are very much blessed. Karna Chela, all of us are, all of us, without. As Manika Vachika says in his Dravachika, "Avan Arulale, Avan Talvane." You can bow and worship His feet only with this grace, only with this, you know, only when He permits you, you can do that. So, Avan Arulale, only with this grace, we can bow to Him. So, all of us are in front of Aruna Chala, in front of Bhagwan Ramana, only because of Bhagwan's grace. So, Bhagwan's grace is that itself is proof. See, you are the Uh, we can't say if uh, that man is very very fortunate. He is very closely associated with Bhagwan. I am not know. The moment you, the thought of Bhagwan comes to your mind, that itself is because of Bhagwan's grace only. And Bhagwan's grace does not know distinction between A and B or C. It's equal to everyone. Bhagwan says the grace is always flowing. When Devaraja Matalyar or Das Bhagwan. Bhagwan, there is so much grace that you are you are giving there. Uh, wow, wow. How about people like us? Bhagwan says, "See, the grace is common to all. It is like a river flowing. He brought a big vessel and he carried all that. You bring a small tumbler, and you are taking only so much. So, fault there is a fault. The fault is not the grace. The fault is in the, the instrument. We have to grow like that. We have to bring." Big uh, vessel, meaning we have to open up to Bhagwan, whole heartedly, without reservation. That is what is not, that is the equivalence of a big vessel here. So once we are able to do that, you are going to get the same amount of grace. Bhagwan won't change the grace for every single person. There is no differentiation in grace. Grace is ever flowing. It's our reception. The, the error is, or the problem is, with the, our reception. So, in order to increase it, what we need to do? Surrender to Bhagwan. Surrender to Bhagwan. That's all we can do at this stage. And then things will fall into place slowly. Have the faith. Keep doing your job. What is the job? Bhagwan again will hit you with the same pramastha. No, we are. What other job you need to do? You don't need to run from here to there, organize uh, this seva, that seva, this puja, anadana. What else? No, all that will happen. All that will happen. All that will happen according to prarabdha. All this is driven by prarabdha. But here we are trying to climb again uh, above. We are trying to transcend all this karma. And find there is nothing called karma. We, we talk about sanchita karma. We talk about prarabdha karma. We talk about agami karma. All this is nothing. All this will become a myth once we transcend. 
there's no karma. All this karma theory we study, uh, you know, volumes and volumes, volumes and uh, literature we study, all this is nothing but burnt ashes will come to the moment we transcend. The moment we reach the state of mind. And Bhagavad says that's the only thing you need to do. It's exactly what Bhagavad Pada Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya, he also said the same thing. Sorry. And Bhagavan, the uniqueness of Bhagavan is he directly gave he gave us one direct teaching, direct method of practical instruction as to how to do it. Otherwise, what we'll do? All of us will be sitting in one corner with such a fat, fat, fat volumes of uh, commentaries of various uh, acharyas, we'll be reading, 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 day and night, day and night, burning the midnight oil, doing all the things. But one clearly said, in 30 slokas, he is finished everything. Nothing, four pages. And it's so easy to memorize the whole thing. It won't take about a week. We'll be sitting there and again and again repeatedly practice to memorize the whole thing. He's given the whole, whole of Upanishad. 108 primary Upanishad. More and about that, there are thousands of other Upanishads which we do not even know, which we do not even come to into our hand. The essence of all that Bhagavan has given, it, given, us, given to us in three or four pages. What else can we ask for? Mahatapasvi, or whatever you call him, you, I mean, you, you can, according to your mental imagination, your capability, uh, I may be strong with words, you may be stronger with words, you can call him so many things. The only one thing is, is he, he is me, ultimately he needs more than that. That's what his teaching is. Dhanam Ramanesan Undi Paralas Loka Murgana says, the thang, that I, the feeling I, that feeling I, that we have is not. In what Ramanesa? Our Guru Nata Ramanesa. Yes. So I think it's a, it took almost about eight or nine sessions for us to conclude Upadesa, to come to the end of Upadesa Saraha. There are four more slokas in Upadesa Saraha, uh, which we normally chant at the end of uh, Tuesday Parayana, which I'll just read. It is a Mapurgana's composition, just to conclude the whole thing. I'll just read those things. Irudigal yellam irai varnadi yai varudi varnangi nar mundi para art murangi nar mundi para Meaning, touching the feet of God, Lord Shiva, all the rishis, the rishis of Daruka forest, for whom the whole thing started, the ascetics of Daruka forest paid obeisance to him and sang his praise. Then, Uttra Guru Di Upadesa Uddi Sutra Guru Paran Uddi Para Sumangala Vekatan Uddi Para The Supreme Guru who sang Upadesa Uddi as an assurance to devotees who came for sal- to came to him for salvation. Like all of us, they are all going to Bhagavan Uddi for that. His auspicious Venkatesa Venkata Sri Ramana. Guru Gunar in all his works he used to call Bhagavan as Venkata, Venkata Ramana, Venkata, Venkatesa, all that he used, all these names for uh, Bhagavan. So, Pallad, Pallad, Palpal Nurai, Pallad, Pallad, Uddi Para, Arni Sai Vargave Uddi Para, Mehi Sri Ramana. Shine gloriously on earth for many hundreds and thousands of years. That is the meaning of this Loka Purvina. You know, sort of acknowledges Bhagavan. Isaya Dupporum Sevi Madupporum Pasaya Rathe Borum Uddi Para Adi Pala Uri Uddi Para. May those who sing, those who hear, and those who flawlessly understand this Upadesa Uddiya, Upadesa Sara, shine gloriously for many years. Rudra said, who all the sins will get eradicated for those people who really understand Upadesa Uddiya, the meaning of Upadesa Uddiya, all the slokas, the meaning of all the slokas, and live by those words, every sin will be gone and they will be living gloriously for years. 
கற்கும்பவர்களும் கற்றோணந்தால் கூப்பிட்டால் நிற்கும்பவர்களும் உந்தி பர தேடொழி வாழிய உந்தி பர மேதோஸ் உபதேசம் உந்தியா and those who have learnt it and understood it abide that itself shine gloriously for long years this is the final shloka from purana and in this we can go upadesha saraha upadesha buddhiya kitab upadesha saraha in sanskrit that's all three part reminiscence upadesha buddhiya upadesha saraha Keep on repeating this is enough. Practice else is needed. This is the sum and substance of all the Upanishads put together. This is enough. Once again, I will practice it slowly, all alone. And it's a, this, this game of spirituality is a lonesome game. It's not a crowded game. There's no crowd. There's no two. Alone. Be alone. Calm. Please. All right. Uh, the calm place is nothing but calm mind. You can be in, in, even in the midst of a marketplace, but with a calm mind. So the calm place that we, is just a euphemistic uh, term for calm mind. So in calm mind, we have to sit and practice the teaching of Bhagawan. There's no doubt, Bhagawan is out saving. God is giving it as a guarantee that we will all reach. We will all have to reach. So, such is upadesha saraha our journey to upadesha saraha very delighted that we were all able to without any major breaks we were able to go through upadesha saraha and we were able to conclude it uh, all this last session